Hello and welcome to Archives and Records Simplified. These videos are aimed at people looking for basic knowledge about archives and records management, although at times I will also touch slightly on information and library science. These videos are designed to provide bite-sized chunks, which means that almost every video will be less than 15 minutes. These videos are honestly for everyone and comments and suggestions are always more than welcome. About me, Sean McMillan, I'm an archivist based in London, and you can learn mo more about me via my LinkedIn profile, to which there is a link posted below. And I'll also post a transcript and notes also if you struggle at any point to understand my accent. And lastly, if you enjoy these videos, I would be extremely grateful if you could kindly like, subscribe and share. Thanks again. Okay, so this video is about the Glasgow Women's Library. Okay, so a quick overview about the Glasgow Women's Library. So as well as being a lending library, they also have a wonderful treasure trove of historical and contemporary artefacts and archive materials that celebrate the lives and histories and achievements of women. Um, this, of course, is the main focus of this video, as it's about archives, but it's also worth pointing out that they support thousands of women across Scotland every year to improve their lives, uh, through, to improve the quality of their lives through a number of services and programmes. And this can include um, programmes that aim to tackle issues such as poverty or sexuality or surviving violence. So although the main focus of this video is on their archives, it is worth pointing out that they are a very dynamic and a very, you know, they're, they're, they try help women in the present as much as possible as well. Um, it's also quite interesting that they grew from a small grassroots project into the main hub for information by, for and about women in Scotland. Um, according to their website, they have 13 paid staff and more than 80 volunteers a year, which for, for, by archival standards, that, that's quite massive, especially for um, a sort of community hub of this type. And they offer specialised learning collections and archives. And I think Glasgow Women's Library, um, you know, they pride themselves as being a hotbed of ideas and as an organisation that pioneers women's social enterprise. Um, and just a little bit about their origins, because I always think it's, it's interesting to look at how these, these sort of organisations developed and grew over time. Um, I think they began as Women in Profile. Um, women in Profile comprise community artists, grassroots activists, academics, students um, and broad-based arts practitioners who collectively ran year-long seasons of events, workshops, exhibitions, projects and other activities before and during 1990. Um, over the course of that time, Women in Profile gathered documentation and materials relating to its activities and following cons consultation with the local community and women's groups across the city of Glasgow, opened the Glasgow Women's Library in September 1991. And they've been providing information, resources and services since then. And thousands of women have um, contributed. So this is a very grassroots organisation and it's a very sort of ground up organisation. It's worth pointing out that learning is very much at the heart of what they do. They deliver over 200 innovative events and activities across Scotland every year. Um, from film screenings to guided walks and core programmes and it can relate to issues such as adult literacy, numeracy or also black and minority ethnic women's projects. Although I would probably point out that this video has been recorded in December 2020 and at the height of Covid I, I dare say some of this has had to be put back but they're certainly a very dynamic and you know they're a very innovative organisation. Um, so this video will be a very brief overview of what they do um, I'm going to go into their archives in a little bit more depth. But the main thing I would say is if you are interested in learning more about them, uh, the really best place to start would very much be their website, the link to which is below, and I'm sure I'll mention it again in this slide, uh, in this presentation. Thanks again. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so in terms of their collections, the Glasgow Women's Library collects the papers and records of organisations and individuals that represent the many achievements and activities relating to women and women's issues. So a few examples collections are the girls annuals from about the 1950s to the 1980s and so that collection obviously predates them as an institution. Uh, the Scottish Women's Aid Archi Archive, Scottish Women's Rural History and many others. Um, the Glasgow Women Library is also home to one of the most significant LGBT historical collections in the UK uh, with materials spanning from the 1920s to the present day. So that, that's a really broad range. 
Um, the collection holds some really, really, really significant archives and artifacts of the UK and international LGBT history. Um, and the Glasgow Women's Library also hosts its own collections of LGBTQ material, which has been collected throughout the lifetime of the library. And they house a large collection of LGBT material, which is mainly Scottish in focus. I should emphasise um, it's the they are based in Glasgow. And if there's anyone out with the UK watching this, Glasgow, of course, is based in Scotland. Um, that's also my home city as well. So if you're wondering where this accent is from, then yeah. Uh, the material in this part of their LGBT LGBT collections mainly dates from the early 1990s to the present. Um, one of the things I really think is quite cool is that the library also keeps its own records relating to its groundbreaking work with women across Scotland and beyond. Material within this part of the collection includes women in profile, so you might remember that as the sort of organisation that birthed um, the Glasgow Women's Library, newspaper cuttings, events and publicity materials, uh, material relating to 21 revolutions, which I think was a project that they were involved in, oral histories, photographs and posters. And that's quite cool. Um, in my experience, or organisations such as these are usually very good at collecting the archives of other people and other organisations, but they, they sometimes can be a little bit, um, sometimes for some reason they're not as good at documenting evidence of their own success. So the Glasgow Women's Library are quite good at this and that's quite interesting to see. And it is worth pointing out that they are also an accredited museum. Um, so, you know, they are accredited, they have went through the various standards and I think, you know, their library is, the Glasgow Women's Library is quite, it's recognised. Um, I think it's got that sort of recognition among archivists and other information professionals that is a really good source of information and historical consultation, if you like. Okay, so this is one of my favourite parts of the video where I review one of their collections. So Scottish Women's Aid Collection. So the Scottish Women's Aid Collection, according to the catalogue description, is a 17.5 metre collection. That's about 43 archival boxes containing graphic, textual and audiovisual materials. Um, I'm going to read the administrative history of this collection. So uh, the Scottish Women's Aid was founded in 1976 and was established to provide a national voice for regional women's aid groups around Scotland. Um, the first women's aid groups were established in 1973, beginning in Glasgow and Edinburgh as a grassroots feminist organisation providing support and temporary housing for women and children experiencing domestic violence. Since the 1970s, many more women's aid groups have been founded and continue to operate throughout Scotland. Um, this collection, so the collection of the Glasgow Women's Library, consists of records created by women's, Scottish Women's Aid and local women's aid groups, <coughs> including annual reports, newsletters, organisational records, promotional material, publications, and other ephemera. Eph ephemera is a very popular word among archivists. Um, there is also a large series of news cuttings included in the collection that were collected by workers at Scottish Women's Aid, primarily from the mid-1970s to the early 1990s. The collection also includes informational materials from related organisations used by staff at Scottish Women's Aid. Um, another thing that, one of the things that caught my, my, eye, my eye about this collection is that it's actually catalogued to file and item level in parts. So for example, one item is titled the Cage Bird Performance Flyer. Um, that's quite interesting. You, you often tend to find that in archival catalogues, um, I, I don't often see many collections catalogued to that level of detail. Usually if they're catalogued to that level of detail, it might be in preparation for digitization. Um, but what is interesting is it's a very, very detailed catalog. So that, that's quite a good thing. That's that's quite interesting that they've been able to catalogue to that level and it shows how much care they take for their materials. Um, with this collection, it's also quite interesting that further accruals are expected, both from Scottish Women's Aid and local women's aid groups, and will be are expected to be added to the existing catalogue. So the reason this quite is quite interesting is because I would say that if you're new to archives administration, um, you might you, you might not you tend to find that most archival collections tend to be sort of complete. So, you know, the idea is that once you have a collection, that's it. You know, you have this idea of the fonds and it's, it's the whole collection. Um, but this really is a collection that's grown and um, that's quite interesting as well. Um, you, you know, this isn't the first collection of this type, but you'd, I, my experience, I've tended not to see as many of these collections as other ones. So 
it is quite cool that it's a growing collection and I think that's also partly because of the sort of organisation they are and the sort of how how connected they are to groups and activities going on in, in women's aid and more generally so that's quite interesting as well. Okay so they also run various projects um, some are short term projects often run in partnership or to link with a significant anniversary or festival and some are popular long running programmes. So, for example, Speaking Out Recalling Women's Aid in Scotland was a two year project which sought to discover, record and celebrate the history of women's aid in Scotland. It ran from 2015 to 2017, which now seems like a lifetime ago and was funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund to uh, the Heritage Lottery Fund. Um, 2016 marked the 40 years since Scottish Women's Aid was founded, bringing together a network of local women's aid groups across Scotland. Um, this groundbreaking movement brought about a big change in Scottish society by working to challenge and prevent domestic abuse. Um, Open the Door Open the Door is a literary event um, intended not just to be for new literary festivals, um, that puts women to the fore, but also the first one of a new kind of format where the more formal audience and speaker setting is replaced by a convivial, memorable shared experience. Um, so, for example, for 2020, Open the Door had a special focus on environmental and eco-feminist ideas. Um, but again, what I would always say is that their website is by far the best place to look at for more details. Um, but certainly, the, you know, this, this one slide will not do justice to the amount of projects. That they've undertaken over the last few years. Okay, the Glasgow Women's Library are also very good at promotion and um, you know generating outreach and engagement and there's a lot to follow. Um, you can look up the events they offer on their website, uh, again Covid being very much an issue at the time of recording and they also have occasional online exhibitions. Um, they actually had one relating to collecting during the Covid crisis so yeah that's that's quite interesting. They have regularly updated news site on their websites and a blog also. Um, they had one blog post that I quite enjoyed looking at and um, it was about books to read over the winter so they do cover a broad range of topics. Um, they also have a number of podcasts on their website. I saw one um, relating to a poetry slam in 2017 that interested me because I used to judge poetry slams so that's quite cool. Um, poetry slams just generally can be a really really interesting source of material and lived experience. Um, underrated I think in, in terms of how well they're represented in archives so it was interesting to see that they had something to do with that and you can also sign up to their mailing list and they are active in all of the main social media platforms such as Twitter and Facebook etc details available via their website. Okay and finally just some contact details and further information as the name suggests they are based in Glasgow that's in Scotland um, and for those who aren't from the UK, Scotland is in the north of Britain. Um, lastly, I would draw attention to their shop and Be Your Friend scheme where you're able to contribute financially. Obviously, this is a personal choice for each and every person, but I do feel it worth pointing out that organisations such as this tend to be quite community supported and rely how heavily on the work of volunteers and external funding to keep their services free. That's something that I really worth think is worth pointing out. A lot of what they offer is free. Um, it's not a paid service and you know anything you sort of donate would go towards that. Um, finally I recommend their website in their first instance which is by far the best um, the best place for up-to-date information. Um, this video has been recorded in December 2020 and if we have survived past that and we're watching this in 2021 or later then I would say there is a lot more to see. Um, so otherwise thanks again for watching. Um, please feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below. I really enjoyed this video. If you've got any suggestions for other organisations, collections or projects that I could cover, I would be more than delighted to do so. Thanks again. Okay, and just a reminder that other videos do exist on the channel. I try average about two videos a month and other examples include videos relating to useful technologies for information professionals and recommended short courses in addition to others. Thanks again.